in our previous class we had seen what and all folders or the files will be created when we create any web app within our visual builder application so we had seen in detail what do we mean by flow what is page what is fragment what we get under the resources root pages so and so forth things in this class we are going to learn or have a quick walkthrough on the designer options available in this web based visual builder designer so on the left hand side there is the web application that is the first option in this category using which we can create the web apps we can create a number of web apps over here so for simplicity purpose it is always a good practice to create only one web app within a visual builder application suppose if you want to create n number of web app within an application then that also you can create but better not to create multiple web apps within the same application so you can create multiple applications for individual use cases so this is one of the things second coming to the service connection suppose your application wants to talk to some back end like the database using the ORDS service if you want to communicate with the oracle integration then you can have the back ends defined over here by default oracle has a inbuilt support for integration applications that is oracle integration so you can configure it over here and also it is having a native support for fusion application suppose if you want to make a call to fusion via rest apis then there is a inbuilt capability to do the same in order to talk to scm hcm cx modules anything you name also there is a support to create your own custom backend so you can create your own custom backends which are apart from opa integration and the fusion you can just define your custom url and you can provide the details and that backend will be available over here and you can start talking with your backend server using the service connections you can define the endpoints over here in short relative uri you can provide in the service connection and in the backend you can provide the base url or the host details for your server next coming to the business object so business object in short these are nothing but the relational database which comes out of the box in visual builder application suppose if you have seen a oracle database or any relational database data will be stored in rows and columns fashion so similar like that if you want to store any application related data natively within your application itself then you can go with the business objects so there is a limit on how much data you can store on this business object suppose if you are planning to have a humongous data then it is always a good practice to make use of the oracle autonomous databases or any other database of your choice so we will touch upon this shortly in our course going ahead coming to the layouts we can define the layouts for our dynamic components suppose we have built one application common application which will show the details of employee and if the application is used by the employee then we will hide the salary information and if the manager or the hr is accessing the application then we will show the salary information so such kind of customizations like what to show for whom so these things we can define over here in the layout section this is one of the examples but layout could be used for n number of things coming to the component suppose if you see over here there are few components like if you want to make use of the batch avatar show the images if you get the input from the customer we are having n number of input components and there are few components which doesn't come out of the box in oracle but it will be available in the marketplace like the dynamic form so and so forth things you can search over here and you can just click on install it will be available over here then you can just drag and drop it in your web application and make use of the component capability so this component section is just for searching in the marketplace any component and adding it over here under the component section next coming to the processes in the earlier release we had a native support to communicate with the oracle process automation but in the latest releases this is being deprecated so we have to move to the rest apis for oracle process automation that is to create the instance get the task or take any action on the task so this process is been deprecated in the latest release now coming to the source we had seen in the first class that is when we create any web app we will be having the access to the files which will be used by the web application now in order to get the detailed source code of your application which gets generated for your web application including web application there will be other metadata files which will be used by your visual builder application so we had told that web app what we create over here 
it is different than the application that is VB application which we created in our earlier class. So web apps can be created within the Visual Builder application. So Visual Builder application is the placeholder for your web apps. So web app what we create over here, it will be stored in your application. So each web app related files that is the raw files that is the .js files, .csv files, all those things related to each page flow so and so forth things will be available over here you can have a look at this and also there is a grunt file which will be used by our visual builder application package and visual builder json file so this is in short what and all options we get over here in the designer page now coming to the right side there is this three dots that is the actions you can stage the application in our previous class we had clicked on this and it had opened the page in the new browser tab now this page will be shown until your application is active or open on your computer and you cannot share the link of this page to your colleague who is using some other computer. So there is this stage action available over here. If you click on stage, it will generate a new URL for you that you can share with your colleague. So this we will see in our next classes. Coming to the settings, here you will have n number of settings with the help of which you can control your application. Coming to the application, you can rename your application over here. Currently in this release, renaming the application is no more available. So it is read only. Suppose if you want to change the description, you can come anytime over here and change. Coming to the translation, you can have your own files imported for the translation purpose. Coming to the application profile. Suppose if you are planning to migrate your application to n number of instances, then you can define the details over here, configuration details like what to use for what environment. And also you can define the configuration details for building purpose, stage purpose and when you publish the application. That is for backend what host you have to use when published, stage or for any other environment. Coming to the teams, suppose if you want to give access for this application to your colleagues, then you can add your team members over here under the team stand. Otherwise they won't find when they open the visual builder instance. Suppose if you add them over here, then only they will be able to look at this application that is first VB app in their instance. Coming to the user role. So this visual builder is tightly integrated with IDCS or the IAM. You can create the roles, then the employee role, manager role, and you can add the users or the groups in that particular role and you can control the behavior of the application. So we will look at this shortly in our classes going ahead. Coming to the business object. So we had seen that business objects are nothing but it is same like a relational database having the tables and the data will be stored in the role manner. Suppose if you want to decide what access what person will get then that you can control over here. We will see this in the classes going ahead. Now coming to undo redo that is to undo any change. It is like same what we have on your windows computer that is to undo the latest change redo if you want to get back the change. Now coming to the git, so this git option will be available if you have made use of the VBS in order to create the visual builder workspace. Now coming to this, there are two options. One is to preview. It will open the preview mode for your application and it will open the page in the new browser tab. Suppose if you want to debug along with preview, suppose if you want to see if there is any issue, how that issue is being caused and want to find the root cause and fix that issue, then you can go for debug preview. Now let us go back to the web app and select the web app over here. When you click the web app, you will get the high level picture of your application. So if you are having n number of flows, then you will get the flow name like this main and the pages what they are having. n number of flows and n number of pages it will list over here. So each flow will list how many pages they are using in this manner. So in the current scenario, I am having only one flow and one page. So not an issue. Let me just create for demonstration purpose the second flow. And click on this web app. Now if you see we are having a second flow with the page we have created. If you have n number of pages it will list over here n number of pages. Then coming to the action chain we will see in detail what does this action chain mean. Now there are a few similarities between other tabs or the task what we see over here like the action chain, event listeners, events, type, variable, html, javascript. So these options will be almost similar to the options what we get for the flow if you see over here and the page level. So all those things will be somewhat similar. Action chain is nothing but here we will define what action we want to perform in a sequence. So this we will learn what does it mean. Event listener is something like 
when we click on a button in a page it will raise an event so these events will be listened by those event listeners suppose if a button has been clicked on the web page then that event that is button click event will be listened by the event listener and what that event has to do will be performed or defined in the action chain that is the set of sequences we will learn shortly now apart from the events what is available out of the box like button will have a click event hover event sorts of other things we can create our own custom events with the help of event step over here like i want to fire some api on click of something then i can define that particular custom event and i can attach that to a any component in the visual builder and carry out the task which needs to be done on particular event so event is nothing but custom event apart from the behavior what we see with the components in the page type in visual builder like any other programming languages we are having the types so it could be a type like object array number so and so forth things we can define that array type or even the endpoint based type we can define that is if we have created any service connection to talk to a integration or ods and if we want to make use of the request or response type then we can create it over here so we will talk about this how to create the type and all shortly in our classes going ahead coming to the variable we can create the simple variables using this basic types any means it can hold any kind of data array boolean number object string then we are having this array data provider buffering data provider multiple and the service so most of the time we will be working with service data provider array data provider and the buffering data provider suppose if you have created any type it will be shown over here the type we can create the variable based on that type suppose if you don't want to create a variable rather a constant then you can define a constant by selecting this option next coming to the html it will show you the html code for this page coming to the javascript here we can define the functions and we can use in our pages or in the action chain coming to the json it will show at high level the metadata for all the things what you defined over here for the types variables so and so forth things coming to the setting you can enable the pwa for your application by just enabling this so that you can access this web page as a application which runs natively on your phone coming to the security and all you can define over here who can access these pages and the translations will refer to the file which is available over here so all the translations regarding the string or the constants we can define over there coming to the main we are having the same options over here that is to create the action chain event listener event type so and so forth things coming to the settings if we are having n number of pages we can select which is our default page from the list now in this case i am having only one page coming to the page in the page we can create the user interface for the application using the pages so this option page designer is not available in the flow or the web application but it will be available for a specific page and you will have the options that is to create the action chain event listener event type so and so forth things at the page level as well so all the user interface related things you will be doing in the pages so by this if you look at the flow over here we are having the application main and the page level so each of the category is having its own scope like we can create a variable type at the application level flow level and the page level so whatever we create at the page level will be visible only for the page whatever we create at the main will be visible for all the pages what we create in the main but it won't be visible for the pages which we create in the second flow suppose if we create the variables javascript events so and so forth things at the application level then all the web pages flows will be having access to this resources which we define over here at the application level how you want to access the variables types based on that you can decide the scope and create at that level so it is completely driven by the project requirement where you have to create the variables types and the javascript function whether at the page level flow level or at the app level